welcome to yet another video uh, on the Car Pilot uh, channel. Um, last year, uh, we introduced the ability to use uh, the Car Pilot Pro with, uh, no, with no autopilot installed. And in order to do that, you needed a Wi-Fi GPS. And then we made a second video explaining how to build one using a GPS and an ESP. Today, we're going to talk about some updated Wi-Fi GPS uh, solutions. Uh, we're going to look into a uh, update of the existing uh, solution, which you can use with an echo sounder. And then we have another uh, variant of the image, uh, which allows you to use uh, when you don't have an echo sounder at all. And in addition, you can also use this second image together with a SkyDroid T10 in order to get really good uh, distance uh, on your uh, Wi-Fi GPS solution. So let's just jump into it. The presentation you see now, it's available for download in the description, as well as are the files that you will need for everything that done here. So let's uh, talk a little about what has changed here. Uh, for the existing image, uh, the big difference is that we have introduced some filters that will remove all unneeded sentences sent from the GPS, things we don't need. So the solution will become more efficient and require less bandwidth. In addition, uh, there were some uh, users that had a struggle uh, when they should connect to their uh, onboard fish finder. And their onboard fish finder used a lot of time to start because the old image uh, after 60 seconds, it tried uh, to connect. And if the fish finder was not present, it then reverted into the standard situation and you couldn't get it to work. This new, new image waits for 90 seconds. And I think the user interface is also quite simple to use. I'm going to have a look at that later. Now about how to reuse an ESP. I had to help between five and 10 different guys that got into problems because the ESP they used had some software on it from before. And if it has, then you will get into trouble. And if you use an old uh, ESP or if you use an ESP that comes from the uh, factory with some software on board, you need to erase everything. And if you don't, then you will have problems. And to erase, uh, my suggestion is to use a tool called ESP tool. This is a tool that requires Python to be installed on your PC. And then when you have Python installed, you can then install ESP tool. So ESP tool is available in Python. And then you need a USB micro USB cable and then you just add a command like illustrated here uh, and then you're good to go. So let's dive into some of the details. In order to get ESP tool, uh, if you don't have a uh, Python from before, my suggestion is use Anaconda. And the link is available in the description. This link will send you to this page, installing on Windows, and yeah, just follow the guide here. Everything you need to do to get Python installed is described here. Then when you have Python installed, you need to start the Anaconda prompt, which is available after you have installed Anaconda. And in this Anaconda prompt, you are going to install ESP tool by this command which is also explained in this link here, where you find how do I uh, add the package ESP tool. So you simply copy this link here, just copy it, and then you open the Anaconda prompt, which looks like this. And if you now right click, you will paste the command you copied in. I've already done this, so I'm not going to show it. I'm going to just remove this part here. So the command is ESP tool.py. That is the program 
you are going to run. And then you run it with some options. And the first option is the chip. And our chip is an ESP8266. The second option is that we're going to use a port. And I don't know what the port is just now, so let me just plug it in like this. And then you're going to need the device manager. Okay, so here we have the device manager. What we need to look into is the ports. And as you see here, I have my USB serial port on port COM4. It will be minus minus port space COM4. And then finally, you're going to do the command, which is erase underscore flash. And when you have everything ready, you just hit OK. And the ESP tool will now remove anything that was on this ESP from before. So you start with a clean sheet. And we're done in around 13 seconds. So now our ESP is ready and we can move on. But when we have everything uh, cleaned, then we can start to flash. This is the same operation every time. The only thing you do for the different images here is that to select a different image, really. So what you need to do is that you need to have the Node MCU software available. You have to download it. You download the images that you need, and then you find yourself a USB to micro USB cable. You plug it in. You find the port that I just did. This is then filled in in the operation part. You have to select the correct porter. And you fill in the name and the path of the file in the config. Now let's do that. So this is then the path for the one with Echo Sounder on my PC. I have made the directory here and then I have stored the file here as you see here. So I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to start the node MCU flasher. which is here. Uh, we note that we are going to use port number four. And then the config, just erase everything here and paste in. And if you're done, if you have done it correctly, it will be green. Then you go into operation and click flash. And then you wait for this progress bar to finish and this icon down here to turn green. And the flash process has completed. Uh, the progress bar got to an end and we have the green icon down here. Now you can now safely remove the USB cable from the ESP and then you can either put it in directly into the boat uh, and, and configure it there or we can do as I'm going to do now to configure it straight away. So I'll plug it back in and then we're going to move on with the first option, which is the updated image for use with an UD, with an Wi-Fi echo sounder. So for Wi-Fi echo sounder, we then use the image which states it's for echo sounder. We have already flashed it. And then let's talk a little about the wiring before we continue to set up the Wi-Fi part. So for the GPS and for the ESP to work, it needs five volt input. The ESP has a 5V pin and a G pin. That's for five volt plus and ground. And the same uh, you typically have on a GPS, you have a G port and a 5V port. So both of these needs 5 volt, otherwise they won't work. And then you only need one additional cable coming from the GPS, the TX pin, which you wire into the D6 pin on the ESP. Do it exactly like this and it will work. Okay, let's have a look at how the Wi-Fi GPS for Echo Sounder will look like. Um, it will show up as a GPS underscore broadcast and then the last part will be part of the MAC address. 
so it's going to be unique. Uh, no one is going to be exactly equal here. So you just click on it and then you add the passcode which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you click connect. And then just wait it out a little. So we have a successful connection and we're going to probably get a question if you want to connect to it all of the time, which we don't really have to. Uh, I can connect to it only this time. So now this is done. And in order for this to work, I need to power on my boat. Otherwise I don't have a Wi-Fi echo sounder. So I'm going to use the YouTube boat, which I built in a separate video series. This has a Raymarine inside. Uh, and it's now booting up. Um, let's move on to the next step after we have connected and have a connection now, like here. We can then put up a browser. And here we have one. I'm going to make a new tab here. And I am going to connect to one. Yeah, that's the one here. I have it already. 192.168.4.1. Hit that and you get straight into the Wi-Fi manager. And what you need to do here now is to click configure Wi-Fi. This button. Yeah. <clears throat> and here I have a lot of Wi-Fi networks. The one that I have in my bait boat is this one. So I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to type in the password for my Raymarine Wi-Fi, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, let me just see that I didn't misspell anything. Everything is good. And then you hit save. And that's it. Now we can try the Car Pilot Pro. Okay, then we will first take a look at the uh, updated image for Wi-Fi GPS uh, used with an echo sounder. We now have connected and configured it. And here I have a 5 volt pack and some power distribution. We'll notice that the GPS has 5 volt input and the ESP also has 5 volt input. And then we have one and only one cable going from the GPS, that's the TX connector, going into the D6 connector on the ESP. And that's everything that's to it, really. So, <clears throat> if I now bring up the tablet and uh, I turn on, as this is a Wi-Fi GPS connected to the onboard fish finder, I will then have to select my onboard fish finder as Wi-Fi. I'm just going to wait till it connects properly. And it's connected. And then I have the car pilot pro ready down here. Um, the connection is then supposed to be GPS and not any of the other modes here. So GPS mode is only to be used when you have a boat with no autopilot. Then we use GPS, all the other four modes, they are only to be used with an autopilot. And you must never use GPS mode with an autopilot. That's fine. And out of the options here for Wi-Fi GPS settings or simple GPS settings, the correct to use here, as we have integrated with our Wi-Fi fish finder and have a Wi-Fi GPS connected to it, is to use Wi-Fi GPS. And then when we go back, then it will find the position. And that's in my house, in my office, where I now make this video. Right, not bad. Wi-Fi GPS, really simple and works. Okay, that was the solution for uh, Wi-Fi GPS using an onboard echo sounder. Let's move on and have a look at the next image. So for standalone um, a solution, when you don't have an echo sounder, we need to make sure the ESP itself can be an access point. And for that, you use a different image 
this one, which is Wi-Fi GPS as access point. When you do that, uh, you will have to understand that uh, the internal integrated antenna on regular ESPs, they have limited uh, distance that they can cover. So you're better off if you search and find a model with a UFL antenna connector on board. I think these are typically called Pro. It's also possible to actually solder in such a connector on a regular ESP, but it's far easier if you just buy one with a UFL antenna connector installed. And then you need a UFL connector to some kind of antenna, either then straight to the upper hole and use it at, as is, or you buy some additional uh, cables and install the Wi-Fi booster in between uh, to get far more distance. Now, besides this point about the UFL connector and the use of an external antenna, everything you do here is exactly the same. The ESP and the GPS still needs 5 volt input, and the TX from the GPS goes into the D6 on the ESP. Now we are ready to start using the Wi-Fi GPS configured as an access point for everyone that does not have an echo sounder in on board. So I'm going to use my phone here and tap uh, Wi-Fi on. Hang on a sec. And here it is. This is the GPS access point with an underscore and part of the MAC address at the end. So it will be kind of unique. So what you need to do is just to tap it and then enter the password, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me just see if I got it right. Yeah. And you hit connect. Wait a little. This is going to check my quality of my connection. So let be patient. Now, in this case, you will want to choose always connect if you do this on your tablet. The tablet you're going to use when you use the application, the CarPilot Pro, uh, together with your boat. So select always connect and we're done. And that's it. That's everything you need to do. Now the Wi-Fi GPS will work. Let's have a look. Then next in line, we have the uh, Wi-Fi GPS access point. Uh, you notice that I have used here a regular uh, ESP. It's not with an antenna, but that's really the only difference. If I had the one with an antenna, I would have plugged it in here and have the external antenna. Uh, at the same time here, this has then 5 volt input coming from the back here. And the GPS also has its 5 volt input. We can see the uh, GPS is now blinking and it has one connector going into the D6 port. So, before we actually start the, the app, it started here, but I need to connect now, not to my Wi-Fi fish finder, but instead we're gonna connect it to this uh, GPS access point here. We enter the password. Dun, 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 dun. Hope I got it right. I didn't. So let me just correct that. That should be number three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Hit connect. Hang on a little before we accept anything here. And I'm going to select always connect. And then in the app connection, still GPS connection now for GPS only. And it's an access point and it's still a Wi-Fi GPS. So this is also the correct choice now. Then we hit back out and yeah, probably first time setup. I should restart my app, so I'll do that. And we have a connection. 
and not that bad to be indoors. 22 satellites, that's really great. So, Wi-Fi GPS as standalone access point demonstrated. You should obviously pick a model with an antenna outlet and not the internal Wi-Fi on the chip. And that was the way we use it uh, as standalone solution for boats with no onboard Wi-Fi fish finder. Now let's take the final way to do this. And this is a tip for anyone that already has a SkyDroid remote or considers to, to build a boat and, and use a SkyDroid uh, remote. And the SkyDroid uh, has an ability uh, that uh, most other um, remote uh, RC controls uh, does not have. It has the ability to transport a serial data stream together with the remote signal. And in order to do that, we're going to use the exact same image. Uh, we're going to mount it up, providing 5 volt as before. We're going to uh, send the TX from the GPS to the D6 on the ESP. So everything is exactly the same as the previous uh, version. But in this case, you're also going to wire TX on the ESP to the Rx on the serial connector, which is to the right here, on the uh, re remote receiver from SkyDroid. And you will see here, there are letters, we can see that later in, in, in the physical video, uh, where you find that the middle part is a T and the bottom part is an R, and you need to connect it to the R. And then finally, we're going to have a look at the use of a SkyDroid radio, which I have here. This is a SkyDroid radio, T-TAM. Uh, we powered on everything. It's the same connection. We have 5 volt to the GPS. We have 5 volt to the ESP. We have one signaling cable, the TX, from the GPS going into the D6 port on the ESP. And the final touch here is that the TX port on the ESP is going to the serial receive port here on the SkyDroid receiver. In addition, since I'm just doing a test setup now, I have also provided 5 volts to this receiver. And the way to integrate this is that the serial port is to the right, all, all to the right here, and the receive port is the bottom. But you can see that also printed on the receiver here, that the receive is on the bottom. So this should now ideally work. Well, let's figure out if it does. First of all, in order for anything to work, <clears throat> we can see that we have only a blinking light here. So this is not connected to the transmitter. So let's do that first by powering on the radio. And now we have a green light here and we should be good to go. Then let's pick out our tablet, go into the settings. We are still going to use GPS connection. GPS only for GPS mode, never to be used with autopilot. But this time, we are going to use Bluetooth GPS because the SkyDroid transmitter, we connect using Bluetooth. I already paired with this, so this should ideally work. And it sure does. Mamma mia. So now we're not getting the Wi-Fi GPS over Wi-Fi, instead, we pass it in to the SkyDroid receiver and we can now utilize the full distance length of a SkyDroid radio, which is typically 600 meters or better. Perfect! So that was how to get the data uh, using a SkyDroid instead of Wi-Fi. And 
let's have a final look at the SkyDroid radio and a shortcoming. So the really good thing about the SkyDroid is that it can carry serial data stream together with remote uh, signal. Uh, but SkyDroid also have one big flaw. And the flaw is it does not have a built-in mixer for a V-tail. So if you don't, if that's not a problem for you, if you want to, to drive the boat, uh, a typically a two-motor boat, using uh, one stick for the right motor and one stick for the left motor, then you can just disregard whatever I say here now. But if you want to combine the two channels so you can use just one stick and drive and steer with a single stick, then you need to buy yourself a V-tail mixer. It may look like this one. There are some other alternatives as well. Um, what does a V-tail mixer do? Well, let's just have a quick look at it. This video shows how to use a mixer, which is here, that is put in between the radio and in this case to servos, which is very physical to see. And if you see now, when he moves this stick, then he controls everything and you will get the correct steering motions as well. Let's have a quick look. So that's forward and backward. And now we start to steer and you see how these servos mix the signal to get the motion and steering that you need. So that's mixing. Uh, what you then do with the mixer is that it has an input side and an output side. And the input side, this you connect to the two different channels for the motor. And on the output side, you plug it into the single cable of the ESC. And that's basically it. Okay. Thank you, guys.